from the Thai Cats Audio Network. This is Thai Cats Today with Louie B. Yes, it is Thai Cats Today for a Thursday, November the 25th, American Thanksgiving. And to borrow a line from Jay Onright, and uh, I'm sure a line said many times before, as Canadians call it, Thursday. So happy Thursday to you. Thai Cats still preparing for Sunday's game, Eastern Semifinal, to host the Montreal Alouettes. We hope you'll join us here at the stadium. You can go to ticats.ca slash tickets, or you could be listening to this podcast, the one you already clicked play on, because later on in the show, I'll give you a keyword to email to us at gameday at ticats.ca, and then we'll pick a winner to give away two seats to the game on Saturday and or Sunday, and we'll do it again tomorrow. Give away another pair as we're giving away a pair a day here on Tie Cats today. Lots to get to coming up here on the show. We're gonna hear from Coach O as we normally do. We're gonna hear from Simone Lawrence. We're gonna hear from Brandon Revenberg. We're gonna hear from Jagera Davis, and I'm gonna be joined by Chris O'Leary. So it is a very busy show here. Chris O'Leary from CFL.ca, get his thoughts on uh, the the big announcement. And there's a couple announcements I want to get to. Number one, we're talking to Sim, we're talking to Rev, because they are up for 2021 CFL Awards as the league announced that Simone Lawrence will be the East Division's nominee for Most Outstanding Defensive Player and Offensive Lineman Brandon Revenberg will be named the most outstanding offensive lineman for the East Division. So they'll go to the CFL Awards, which you can attend, by the way, in person. You go to ticats.ca, find out how you can be at the CFL Awards. Uh, But for Simone, he was named the East Division's most outstanding player for the third time in his career. And for Brandon Revenberg, the second time he's been up for the honor, having previously been named the East Division's most outstanding offensive lineman back in 2018. So lots to get to on today's show. Also did want to let you know that if you are coming to the game on Sunday, whether you buy tickets or win tickets here on the show, you will hear Big Rec at the halftime because Big Rec will play the halftime show at the Eastern semifinal. Going to let you know there's less than 3,000 tickets up for grabs. You go to ticats.ca slash tickets. You can email tickets at ticats.ca or you can call 905-547-2287. Again, 905-547-2287. All right, lots to get to on today's show, as mentioned, so let's start right away. Let's hear from the head coach of the Ticats, Orlando Steinauer, and we started our conversation just kind of asking him about whether he has seen a change from week to week, from last week in practice to this week, uh, whether playoff mode has been activated. Here's what he had to say. To be honest with you, I just think they're focused. I mean, I, I haven't really measured anything I do like the energy out there but you know in comparison to other weeks you know I feel like we we go out and we prepare hard and you know I haven't noticed a huge difference uh, I do like the energy though no. well you know what I, I stay out of the locker room you know what I mean I really I really that's the that's the players spot so I'm not gonna say you know I could be way off but I don't uh you know, I don't I don't have a pulse of what goes on in, in their in their room, to be honest with you. I just I know about the meeting rooms and I know about the, the practice field and and that's about where it where it stops. It's it's their football team uh, in there. Well, I think it's different team to team, Steve. Uh, that's a general statement. But to just, you know, I, I would take the experience over not take it. You know, I think that uh, just as much as it's another game, the consequences uh, are different. And that's that's the biggest difference. And, you know, how we prepare and find fixtures and details will always draw on experiences from the past. So I don't think that that uh, in in the cases that I've been around as a player and a coach, I I have when I've been around, you know, the teams in the playoffs, like I said, as a player and coach, I've never had it where it hasn't helped. But how much and if that means win or lose, I, I don't have that metric. Well, I'm extremely happy for them that they're being recognized. And I know that their teammates would likely echo the same thing along with the, the whole organization and the coaching staff. Uh, it's, it's really neat when you hear, hear of people getting rewarded, when you know the inside, you know them from the inside out. And first of all, they're great people. 
they are outstanding teammates. Uh, Brandon's worked extremely hard. You know, he's, you know, overcome a lot. He's just a super strong guy that doesn't, doesn't desire recognition, but is very deserving of the recognition. He's a quiet leader, uh, comes out to practice, spends time with the younger guys, uh, has been very coachable. I know Mike Gibson's been extremely pleased and, and says that he's one of the best that he's been around. And so I, I couldn't be happier uh, for Reverend Bird. But obviously, he'd be the first to tell you that, you know, his accomplishments are a result of everybody around him. So, you know, just a, a great credit to the whole offense and the offensive coaching staff uh, that Brandon will get a chance to uh, represent Hamilton. When it comes to Simone, uh, again, people that have been around practice knows that uh, he doesn't leave being great to chance. He comes out and he works. And as vocal as he may seem to everybody else, there's times where he really does just lead by example and goes out and handles his business. So, you know, I think he's deserving, a uh, deserving representative of the organization and proud of him. But again, uh, these types of things, I don't mind talking about them because this is a sports entertainment business, uh, but there's one goal. And so the focus will remain on the team and, and the game this week. That is the head coach of the Ticats, Orlando Steinauer, as he caught up with him after practice day. And a great answer there at the end about uh, the two East Division nominees for CFL awards coming from the Ticats. Most Outstanding Offensive Lineman, Brandon Revenberg, and Most Outstanding Defensive Player, Simone Lawrence. And uh, let's hear from those gentlemen right now. Uh, let's hear from Brandon Revenberg first. Uh, just a little background here. Revan Berg was uh, named the most outstanding offensive lineman for the second time in his career, having previously earned the honor in 2018. So there are all 14 games in left guard for the Ticats and earned his third straight divisional all-star appointment. He is the most durable lineman I've ever seen, <laughs> offensive lineman. He has yet to miss a game due to injury, a regular season or playoffs. Uh, and uh, as mentioned, this is the second time he's been up for the award. So I asked him, uh, what's different uh, this time around? Here's what he had to say. Uh, not a whole lot, I guess. I mean, it's one of those things I'm just, I'm not paying too much attention to individual awards right now. I think as a team, we have a bigger goal in mind. Um, definitely honored to be nominated for the East, but you know, we're all focused on something else as of right now. Yeah, I mean, as far as it, it's a contact sport, like it is what it is. Things are going to happen, but all the guys try to take care of themselves the best they can when they're hitting the cold tubs, making sure they get lifts in, rolling out, stretching. And it's just a real cohesive group. We all play for each other and we're ready to battle. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there, there's nothing better than playing in front of a home crowd, especially in Hamilton. Um, you know, they go blackout, everyone gets hype. It's a great atmosphere to be in for sure. And that is offensive lineman Brandon Revenberg as we caught up with him after practice today. He is one of two Tie Cats up for awards, the CFL awards. The other, Simone Lawrence. For the third time, hoping third time's the charm for him, uh, he's up for the most outstanding defensive player as the East nominee. Started all 14 games at linebackers for the Ticats. He led the CFL in interception return touchdowns. He ranked fifth in defensive tackles, sixth in interceptions. He was seventh in the league in defensive plays made and second among all linebackers in quarterback sacks to go along with three pass knockdowns. He also earned his fifth career East Division All-Star. He was named the CFL's top performer in Week 7. He passed Rob Hitchcock for all-time tie cats tackles. It was a very good season for Simone Lawrence, and we caught up with him after practice. And before we got into the award stuff, uh, I noticed on Twitter he had mentioned uh, you know, being thankful for you know, on Thanksgiving, American Thanksgiving, and I asked him, uh, you know, wh what what he, is he thankful for this year? I'm just grateful for this um, opportunity that we have with the franchise and all my brothers and all my staff, all the coaching staff and the fans, just for this opportunity to compete for the Great Cup. Um, you know, sitting out of football in 2020 was super different and stressful. And just having the opportunity to be out here in Canada doing something that you love and competing for a championship, the ultimate goal, I think that this is just a super humbling experience, and I love it. I love the feeling. I'm very thankful for this opportunity. 
Uh, of course, that's just the way it's going to be, and that's just the way it is. You know, every season I come up here to play football, um, I know that I'm going to be surrounded with great coaches. I know I'm going to be surrounded with great players. And all I have to do is uh, my job and play very good football. And, you know, I don't take nothing for granted, and I work very hard during the offseason, and then that's just the way it's going to be. Third time's the charm, though, to get the uh, the league award here? <laughs> you know, it's not, it's never up to me, you know, but, you know, I, I work pretty hard for it. Um, the franchise, we all work hard for it. The defense, I felt like um, it's a defense award and, you know, I'm representing the guys and I feel like, you know, we put ourselves in a great position to get it. For sure, it's cool, you know, to get individual honors, but it's always fun when the the crew gets some, you know what I mean? You know, these guys had amazing seasons and not even like, the guys that got all-stars or guys that didn't get all-stars that, you know, or all-stars that made other people all-stars. I feel like Howes had a freaking amazing season. I feel like Siante had an amazing season. Um, you can go out with Javon, you know, he's that's my uh, buddy in crime, you know, without him, I'm not doing what I'm doing. So a lot of these guys that Ted, you know, he doesn't get enough credit for holding double teams and, uh, demanding double teams. These guys are amazing players and they do a, a great job for us and they help us win a lot of games. But, you know, everybody can't get it, but their hard work doesn't go unnoticed. You know, we, we know and understand that we can't do it without them. And I think Cam was probably the best uh, new Sam ever to come in the CFL this year. He's a tough, he's a tough guy and, you know, it shows every week on the field. So I'm just uh, super excited about the group group of guys that we're about to go to war and try to win this great cup with. That is Simone Lawrence as we caught up with him after practice today. The East Division nominee for most outstanding defensive player. All right, you want to go to Sunday's game? Well, I want to help you get there because I have a pair a day on Thai Cats today to give away. Say that 10 times fast. A pair a day to give away on Tie Cats today for the Eastern semifinal on Sunday as the Tie Cats hosts the Montreal Alouettes. And if you want to be there, well, all you got to do is go to your email, open your email, your app, your computer, wherever you're on. In the two line, go game day at tiecats.ca, hit tab, skip CC, skip BCC, go to the subject line, and in the subject line, Put the words Darren Flutie. Darren Flutie is the keyword today. Email that to gameday at ticats.ca. Include your name and the city in which you live in the body of the email, and you'll be automatically entered to win a pair of tickets to Sunday's game right here at Tim Hortons Field. That keyword again, Darren Flutie, and the email gameday at ticats.ca. Your chance to win a pair of tickets, and if you don't win today's tickets... Well, you might win tomorrow's tickets because we got another pair to give away on tomorrow's show. So lots going on here at the Ticats Audio Network. Giving away tickets. Got a brand new episode of Task and Twos out. We'll have a Speaking with the Enemy drop in later this week as well as I catch up with Sean Campbell. So make sure to subscribe to the Ticats Audio Network and make sure to go email Darren Flutie to game day at ticats.ca to be entered to win a pair of tickets to Sunday's game. And for more on Sunday's game, very pleased now to be joined by CFL.ca's Chris O'Leary. And uh, Chris, we'll talk about this kind of news that's coming across the show here. Simone Lawrence, Brandon Revenberg up for uh, CFL awards as the East Division nominees. And I want to talk about Simone here because he was uh, the nominee the last time we played football back in 2019. And it's pretty incredible that uh, here we got a player who's who seems to be getting better with age. Uh, that's exactly what I was thinking. And, um, you know, I, I got to see the, uh, the list of nominees a little early this week. And uh, that was kind of the first thing that popped into my mind, too, was um, – just these last two seasons, 2021 and 2019, um, he, he's just been phenomenal in, in a lot of ways. And he's really, um, you know, I, I think he's always been kind of an, an all-star, perennial all-star caliber linebacker. And now you look at these last two seasons and he's kind of rounded that out. He's just, uh, you know, he's picked up the sacks, uh, the interceptions, two touchdowns this year. Um, just just a, an incredible season. And uh, yeah, and like you said, just, just remarkable that, you know, as, as he gets older, um, you know, has, has kind of uh, come into his own and, and really uh, uh, set himself apart, I think, from, from a lot of players in the league. Especially a couple of things, uh, Steve Melton and I were discussing this, you know, when the nominees crossed a couple of minutes ago, is that, like, 
um, you know, he, Delvin Bro was playing behind him last year, and then he loses Delvin Bro. Now he's playing with, you know, his linebacker crew is completely different. You know, no Larry Dean. Now it's uh, Jovan Santos, Knox, and Cam Kelly. Like, the leadership qualities that, that may not always be display on the field or in game action, I think, you know, I think a lot of the voters recognize just how important he is to this team as well. Yeah, I think so. And I think, um, I think it's probably the good thing about the, the way the voting process works, where you start locally and, and kind of build your way up uh, as, as, as the uh, accolades, I guess, kind of accumulate for you. But um, yeah, I think, I think it's important to see for those people that are there most often and most around the team to kind of recognize that. And uh, no, I, th- I, th- I think you're right. It's, um, I think, just an, an example of a veteran player kind of coming into the prime of his career. I mean, he's been there, what, eight years now? Um, so, so you've got somebody that just really understands the culture and, and kind of sets the tone in that locker room, I would think. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, again, just uh, a lot of change around him. And uh, I think probably being that veteran, being the tone setter. And I think, like, you know, I think what it, whatever he does is off the field for that team, I mean, he backs it up when he's on the field, right? And uh, that's, that's an easy lead to follow. From one uh, longest serving tie cat to the other longest serving tie cat coming over in the same trade, Jeremiah Masoli. I loved what you had on CFL.ca where it was just like, can we put this to rest for a little bit? Like, can we stop? Can we stop the Masoli Dane Evans? Like, we've been talking about it literally since before day one. Jeremiah Masoli has earned the right. I feel like he's earned the, he should have earned the respect of everybody in the cross league. But I, I thought you made a nice argument that this is Jeremiah's team. It, it, whether you, you, you love him or you don't, this is his team. And, and that that's not likely to change. This no, I, I, no, not exa- exactly. Not this season. And I think we're at the point now where whatever side you're on with that, that argument, um, I think, I think you'd have to recognize that like, I don't think it would be fair to Dane Evans at this point to, to be like, here are the keys. It's yours go get him when he's essentially played three games this season. Right. Um, and, and, and I mean, if you take off the, the season finale last week, um, you know, it's, it's been a long time since he was actually on the field and, and kind of in rhythm with the offense and everything. And I know you're, you're in practice and you, you have a basic rhythm, but I think that game speed is totally different. I just, I don't, I don't think it would be fair. I don't think Orlando Steiner even thought about it for a second. Yeah. realistically to uh to make that switch but it, it just i don't think it would work it's not it wouldn't be the wise move to make at this point i think masoli you look at the body of work from when he came back from that injury um has, has had I, I think it would be what seven games i think he's had four or five that have been excellent and uh one for sure that he would like back but uh no i i think i think he's in a good spot and this is the guy you would want as you go into this weekend and i mean to in jeremiah's defense it was one half right it was one you can even pin it down to one bad quarter that I'm sure he'd want back in that first half in Toronto a few weeks ago. Uh, The path to the Grey Cup here in Hamilton goes through Toronto. Uh, But first, the Ticats will have to get past the Alouettes. What have you seen from this Alouettes team? And is Trevor Harris kind of the ultimate X factor that if it's Trevor Harris of, of, you know, East semifinals past, the Ticats might be in trouble? Uh, I, I think that's definitely true if, if that's the case, if that's the, the Trevor Harris that, that shows up. Um, no, I, I look at that Montreal team and um, I, I think they're dangerous. Um, it's, they're, they're, I think Trevor Harris adds an element of maybe unpredictability uh, just because uh, Orlando and, and the Ticats haven't gone up against him with that group yet, right? Um, so I, I, th- I think there's that. Um, I look at that defense. The defense actually reminds me of Hamilton's a lot. I think it's, it's very aggressive. They get after the quarterback. They force turnovers. Um, you know, I think they, they may have padded their stats on the sacks just because uh, a few games against the Red Blacks. But, um, but no, I, I think two very similar defenses. Um, I, I think uh, something that, that, that I'm keeping an eye on as, as, as the week goes ahead is just Mario Alford with, with uh, the Owls just coming off the six-game injured list. Um, if he's able to play this week, I mean, that's, that's kind of what they've been missing. I think the last six weeks uh, on special teams and in the return game. Um, and he, he's a huge factor. I think we all, we all understand that, that uh, value that the, the return game has in, you know, a single game elimination situation. So um, no, I, I think, I think Montreal is, is very interesting. And then, yeah, just that I, I, I asked Rolando about that after the game on, on Saturday, just that wrinkle that I think Trevor Harris throws in. He didn't really buy that. He didn't, he didn't, didn't want to go down that path, but uh, I, I think it's a, a big thing. And, you know, you look at what he's doing, I think, is it's very similar to what Zach Caleros had to do in 2019 with the Bombers. It's a, it's a very steep hill to climb, I think. But, um, you know, if, if it can work out, um, you know, and I think what, we, what we've seen from Trevor Harris, what we know he's capable of, uh, I think maybe it's a lot to ask him to bring that all together with a still fairly new group. But it's, uh, if he can, it's, uh, it's, it's a very interesting thing, and it's a totally different dynamic for this team. 
Yeah, not to say Montreal isn't playing for this season, because, of course, based on what Patrick Levels says, uh, right. they are going to win this game. Uh, but I, I think, you know, this playoff game could go a long way building chemistry into next season for Montreal uh, with Trevor Harris at the helm uh, for, for the, if that's the way they decide to go. Uh, let's talk about the Ticats, though, before we wrap up here, because what are you encur- what are you most encouraged about with this Ticats team? What have you seen the last few weeks – Either chemistry, but building into the playoffs. What, what, what? We, why would you be encouraged for the Tie Cats this week? Um, well, I think there's plenty of things to be encouraged about, and I think for me, it starts uh, with kind of I think what we were talking about going into the season is just there's so much continuity. This is a group that's largely been there and been through the playoff battles. I think that counts for a lot, right? And I, I think that when you look at Montreal with Trevor Harris and, and kind of what they're trying to do almost on the fly is a huge advantage for Hamilton, right? It's just that. They, they don't have that. Everybody knows everybody there. And I think that playoff experience and even to, to get to the great cup and come up short is uh, so valuable going forward for this group. So I, I don't think there's anything that's really going to surprise them in terms of that. I think that experience will go a long way. And I think we've seen through the season, I think all three phases of this team are, are a huge threat. And uh, you know, maybe the return game isn't the same with, without Frankie Williams exactly, but you know, I, I still think, you know, we've seen Brandon Banks going there on spot and, you know, it wouldn't surprise me at all to see him, do something big in a playoff game when they're in, in a return or, or in the receiver spot. Um, and then I think was it Poppy White was, was returning in, in the, the game last week. I mean, and we saw good things there from him too. I think um, they've got the threat in special teams. The defense has been strong all year. The defense is good enough to win a game for you on their own. And then uh, when we see the offense click, I mean, it's, it's a really tough team to beat. Um, you know, you can't predict that all three will come together, but um, I mean, even if they get two out of three, I think they've got a really good shot this weekend. And then, uh, yeah, maybe a fourth factor, and that would be the, uh, the stand, the virtual stands here behind me. <laughs> uh, but, but the blackout, the guys, I mean, those guys really buy into it, don't they? They really, I mean, not, not that they buy into it, but it does, it does do something for them. And I've talked to guys after the game, and it, it's not just talk. There is oh, some for sure. element of, of the, the 13th man here in this building. I think so. And, and I mean, I think if, if you, if you need proof of that, I mean, just look at like the way sports have looked over the last year. Right. And we, you know, we've seen empty stadiums, empty arenas um, and, and empty Olympics. And, you know, it's, it's different. And um, you know, I, I think we've, we've heard athletes kind of say that on the other side of it too, that, that competed in sports through 2020 um, just how much of a different dynamic that is. And I think a lot of athletes feed off that crowd. Uh, yeah. I think it's, it's going to be phenomenal. And uh, I, I think just even for the fans that are there, I think, um, I'm sure lots of them have been going to games already this year, but I think just to, to get a big crowd of people together and uh, have something on the line and so, something to be charged up about, I think, uh, I think it's going to be a great atmosphere. It's well said. Uh, Chris, appreciate you doing this. I know you're busy. Uh, you got a couple other teams uh, you got to keep tabs on. So thank you. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for your insight. Appreciate it. No, absolutely. It's going to be a fun weekend. And my thanks to Chris O'Leary for joining me. And my thanks to you as well. Always do appreciate it. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. we got uh, one more show leading up to uh, game day on Sunday, so make sure to join us tomorrow as we give away our last pair of tickets for Sunday's game. And again, the keyword on today's show, Darren Flutie. Email that at gameday at tightcats.ca for your chance to win a pair of tickets. I told you we would hear from JG, Jagera Davis, because he gave one of the best answers I've heard all season as I asked him, what is a must on his plate on Thanksgiving. Uh, and he gave one of the all-time great answers where he just listed about just about every food you can imagine. So as we sign off here today, I'll remind you that we are back tomorrow, same time, same place. But I want to wish you a very happy Thanksgiving to all my American listeners, uh, to all my American listeners in Canada who are listening, or to anybody who celebrates a very happy Thanksgiving. And on the way out here, here is what JG is says is is a must have on Thanksgiving. Have a great day for the Tiger Cats Audio Network. I'm Louis B. Hoping you have a great day. Oh man, look here. It's funny. I literally just got the phone with my cousin not too long ago, Facetime, and showing me the whole spread for Thanksgiving. I mean, it was the candy yams, the broccoli rice and cheese, um, the smoked deer links, brisket, ham, turkey, dressing, the broccoli rice and cheese. You name it. Then Desserts galore, my favorite, um, peach cobbler, um, honey bun cake, um, pound cake, um, sweet potato pie, pecan pie, the list goes on. Tie Cats Today with Louis B. Subscribe 
like and get your Ty Cats fix every weekday.